we were off. Yeah. We're back. Long week of filming. <laughs> So, you know, after a week in Sand Hollow, Utah, we learned a lot from Rich. What was it? The axial the race? Axial, axial RC car breakdown, mm -hmm. the race. Uh, we saw uh, Rich's Gladiator. He test drove it for us, and then he was kind enough to let us test drive yeah, it. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Straighten it out a little bit. This way. Stop, stop, stop. So after a long week of filming, learning, it was time to relax a little bit and uh, digest all the information that we learned. So little did we know, um, Thomas's brother and sister-in-law live in Vegas, not too far from where we were, and we decided to meet up with them and they were gonna show us the Gold Strike Trail for our first time. Uh, it's too early for us. It's a classroom time. Psych, we're going back to the polar park. <laughs> I feel like cool. Gold Strike Trail here about probably five minutes from the Hoover Dam. It's a really cool trail. There's about, I think, 12, 16 big obstacles. And uh, we're actually gonna have to do some rappelling today. So these skills will come in handy for overlanding and uh, trail riding at Trail Hero. It's good to know how to do, do this stuff. So if you couldn't tell, this is my first time repelling, and uh, it was pretty gnarly. There's these like tethered ropes that are they're either screwed into a rock or tied around a tree. It's, it's super sketchy, and they're old, weathered ropes. You basically have to put 100% of your trust in those ropes. So as we're hiking, there's this really cool slot canyon that we saw. Hello! It was just enough room to squeeze in, and it looked like some people had been in there before, so I decided to kind of squeeze in there and see how much it opened up. Are you claustrophobic, okay? Does it open up down there? Hell yeah, it does. Does it really? I had to take a deep breath, take a breath out, and then kind of finagle my way in and out of that thing. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, it opens up. No way. Ah! <laughs> Water. You feel the energy. Uh, it's healing water. You get like a slow mo. Yeah. Y'all know not to drink it or let it get in here. Wait, what? Do not drink I it. Did. What happens <laughs> if you drink it? Amoebas. <laughs> It's commonly called the brain-eating amoeba, which can cause a brain infection when water containing the amoeba goes up the nose. Let's go. Now this is a hiking trail. Gold strike. Are we crossing that? Crossing that, there's the Colorado right there. Colorado River. If we wanna to go to the cave, we have to swim. What do you think about that? We have to swim? Yeah. We're gonna have to leave our stuff here. Why? Originally, we were told that we could walk across the river and then walk over to the Sonic Cave. Well, when we got to the bottom, what we thought was going to be a walk across turned into a swim across. So you can almost see the Hoover Dam from here. That's the Memorial Bridge, which is a nice little viewpoint. And just around that corner, the Hoover Dam. You can see kind of the edges of it. See the concrete and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's a swim. It's yeah. a swim. Yeah. No doubt. Swim out to that. Yeah. We gotta go that way. Yeah, we gotta swim out to that. How deep? Yeah. Oh, I mean, six, seven feet. <laughs> You're great, Jake. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell you, the Colorado River in January is freezing. <laughs> How deep is it? Can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That 
was it? Oh, I'm dead. Was the that? swim wasn't bad. The walking on rocks is like. All right, I have sensitive feet. <laughs> They're sensitive. So we saddled up and just went for it. Not aware of the fact that once we got to this little island that it was gonna be full of all these tiny little rocks. Let's just say Graham and I were walking on what he calls ancient Chinese <laughs> torture rock. I don't know if I can make it all the way to that. Ethan, come back and carry me. So finally, after this crazy hike down a canyon, crossing the freezing cold Colorado River, we finally arrive at this sauna in the side of a mountain. This is crazy! Is it warm? <laughs> oh yeah. Don't don't let the water get in your nose or mouth. What if you have to pee? Uh pee. Oh, Into the belly of the beast! Into the belly! Those hot springs. After all that, all that nonsense, we finally got to just relax and just enjoy the hot spring. It was really fun. Like it was really warm. There was three different pools and three different temperatures. One was like pretty lukewarm. The higher one got like really warm, and the top one was super hot. Yeah, while we're just relaxing and while we're chilling, like all of a sudden we just heard a helicopter. Being in a canyon like that, that's never a good sign. I decided to just grab the camera and just start running because it didn't sound far away. So I'm like sprinting and I'm trying to like figure out what's going on. Everyone's looking up. He just like that big spot where we're at, his foot got caught and then he like fell on his head. So they might just try to get him, I don't know. Yeah. So I just kept going and all of a sudden there's this literally a medevac helicopter up in the air, a guy's rappelling down. This guy um, slipped on one of the rocks because there was a little. It was a little wet, and yeah, he busted his head open. Fortunately, he was okay. But having that experience and seeing that really showed that uh, how quick things can change. So a few years back, I was actually in a really bad rollover accident when I was working on a TV show. You know, an accident happened. You know, we slipped on the rocks. Like it was a, it was a really high pitch angle. The truck rolled once, rolled twice, three times. All of us are in the car, no seat belts. I felt just very inequipped at that moment. Through that experience and now like this experience, you know, two people at this point I've witnessed getting evacuated, you know, out of mountains. It's a very serious concern that we need to take seriously. We've learned the driving skills, we've learned kind of like the technical side, but now we gotta think of it another layer of the safety side of things. Going on Gold Strike, it kind of opened my eyes to the fact that it's not just me who's affected by my bad physical health. It's actually everybody else in our crew. There's only so many hours of sunlight in a day. You only have so many resources. So if someone gets injured and goes down, you're the weak link there. You know, seeing these, these incidents happen, it really brought into light just safety and being able to do these things safely. Having a kid on the way and getting ready to have my first child to be able to go on adventures as a family is definitely top of my list. So personally, on my adventure through all of this, I actually want to learn mountain rescue skills, first aid. What do you do if it's in a situation where someone breaks an arm or someone needs to be evacuated? My goal of fitness, really, it shouldn't just be about me. It should be about getting our team through this entire journey. I think uh, this is going to be the start of a, a long journey of, of learning, growing, and adapting to what uh, nature's going to throw at us. So it's probably wise of us to take some survival classes and mountaineering classes to get some more experience and just uh, familiarize ourselves with what to do in situations. It was hot, it was cold, it was up, it was down. <laughs> a lot of little um, payoffs. Dude, yeah, that was a very eventful day. <laughs> but no, I think we uh, definitely can learn from uh, what happened today, definitely need to prepare for emergency situations. So learning some first aid, mountaineering, the basics, you know, it's you realize how quick things can go to shit when you're out in the middle of nowhere.